Walangan ka ng iyong biyaya Buong buhay Hawak mo sa iyong kamay Wala sa aking pagmunan Ang subahiming awitin ko Kabutihan ito Oh
Hey Church, here are some important announcements set for you and your family. The Sea Gentiles for Christ Ministries Church, in its mission to know God more and make Him known, encourages you to take part in God's great work in our city. Keep your spiritual fire burning and do not miss our gatherings. Due to the increasing rate of COVID-19 cases in the city, physical worship service is temporarily postponed, effective on October 25 until further notice. But don't you worry because padayon gihapon ta sa pagsamba sa tuwang buhi na ginoo online. Catch us live every Sunday at 2.30 in the afternoon on our Facebook page that is SGCM Zamboanga. You can also join us as we pray for our nation as a church during our online prayer meeting every Wednesday at 6.30 in the evening. Online intercession every Sunday at 6 in the morning. Jam C Online Youth Jam every Saturday from 5 to 6 in the evening. Support our local church activities online by liking, interacting, and sharing on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. This is Church, this is Community, this is See Gentiles for Christ Ministries. See you next Sunday. and offering, let me read to you a verse from the book of First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 3. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God, over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. This was the time for the building of the holy temple of God in Israel. Aside from giving from all of his resources as a king, David, in his devotion for the temple of God, decided to give even his personal treasures of gold and silver more than what he had given as a king. If King David was fully convinced that the giving of his personal treasures is a part of his consecration for God, how much more us who are also fully convinced that God did not just give what He had, but gave His one and only Son as the sole provision for our transgressions, that we may have life and have it abundantly. Another way to honor God is when we choose to help those who are in need, especially in this time of crisis. As mentioned in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 31, we may ask and coordinate with those church members who are actively participating in the outreach programs to extend help, especially to those who have been affected financially by the pandemic. Thus, we may give our tithes and offering 
by our SGCM e-giving through BPI account or GCash as flashed on the screen. And please don't forget to send your proof of transaction and prayer request to your leaders or to any member of finance service team. The church is always praying for you. May we all come to prayer, church. Father, we come before you with hearts that are thankful, for you are always with us. You never leave us nor forsake us. Your protection and provision are always on time. You grace us with things that are even beyond our ability to comprehend. As we give our tithes and offering, may it reach thy throne as a sweet aroma of worship. It's not just a representation of what we have. Instead, it is our devotion unto you, our God. Blessing and honor, glory and power, forever be yours. And all this we pray in the most holy name, Jesus. Amen. We are surrounded in the world by rampant immorality. 130,000 babies were aborted today. Sex trafficking, a $58 billion industry worldwide. Some cultures abusing distinctions between male and female, other cultures ignoring distinctions between male and female. Over a billion people live and die in desperate poverty. Though I would like to insulate myself from these statistics, they represent realities. James says, if there's no mercy in your life toward the orphan and the widow, if you're living according to the ways of this world, and if you don't have a tight rein on your tongue, your religion is a sham. It's worthless. We must speak clearly and biblically and boldly on these things. A global, God-exalting, passionate idealism is exactly what is needed in the Church of Christ today. You can't know this King and be silent about this King. We're compelled to live out our faith in Him, to apply our convictions from Him in every facet of our lives. It may cost us at work. It may cost us in our community. It may cost us according to the government. But we obey Christ regardless of what it costs because we fear God more than we fear men. Let's live differently in the world around us. Let's turn things upside down because we want His gospel to spread to the nation. We want His glory more than we want life itself. Magandang hapon, church, and welcome sa ating online worship service. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Ronald Bustamante Bilang, I am Coach Jimmy Futshai. This is C Gentiles for Christ Ministry where we exist to know God more and make Him known. Tuloy-tuloy po namin kayong inaanyayahan to please go ahead and invite your friends, your family, and your co-disciples by tagging and mentioning them in our comment section. At tuloy po ang pag-like, react, at pag-share ng video na ito. Or you may also subscribe to our YouTube channel, SGZM Zambuwanga. I am very excited to share the Word of God this afternoon. At the same time, overwhelmed because we are at our fourth week sa ating series na Counter Culture. Pansin po ba natin na medyo mabibigat po ang message ni Lord para sa atin the past Sundays? If nabibigatan po kayo sa ating mga topics, then you know that this is what this series is all about. At tuloy-tuloy po itong series na to hanggang Nobyembre. So for us to move forward, I invite you to please bow down your heads and let us pray. Hallelujah! Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you and we would like to honor you, O God, Lord, with our time this afternoon. Lord, thank you sa opportunity, O God, Lord, to be able to come together even online, Lord, to share your word, to even, O God, Lord, get to receive your message that you have for us this afternoon. Lord, we pray that you will just move within us, O God, wherever we are watching, O God, Lord, wherever we are listening to this preaching, I pray, Holy Holy Spirit, that you would move in us, you would speak to us in a very personal way. Lord, I pray that let your word, 
O God, be delivered to your people in a way, O Lord, that we would receive it as how you would want it to be. I declare, Lord, for us to have an open mind and an open heart, O God, to receive fully your message for us individually, O God, Lord, and even as a congregation. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, O God, Lord, for the time that you have given us, O God. I declare focus. I declare, O God, Lord, undivided attention, and Lord, we cancel any signs of distraction, O God, Lord, para kami ay makapag-focus sa iyong salita ngayong hapon. We surrender everything to you, O Lord, continuously be glorified and be magnified. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Amen and Amen. Counter culture. Being exposed in our culture today, we can actually agree that not everything we see is actually beneficial for us. Tama ba? How many of us are so stressed kapag nagbubukas tayo ng TV at nanonood ng news? O di kaya sa tuwing umaga nakikinig ka ng radyo? Or just by simply scrolling sa yung Facebook feed or timeline or social media, you get to see news from left to right and actually get to, to, to see na napaka-toxic at napaka-chaotic ng mundong ginagalawan natin ngayon. Marami nga sa atin ay nag deactivate pa ng kanilang mga social media kasi ayaw mo nang ma-stress. However, we need to be updated so that we could pray about it. My point is this. We live in a very chaotic world today. And the church is not exempted in being exposed to it. Relating with our chaotic world today. This afternoon, we're going to look into the Word of God and see a letter or study a letter of Apostle Paul that he wrote purposely for a church that is actually exposed to also a chaotic culture or a chaotic environment that you and I could relate. And this is the letter that Apostle Paul wrote for the Church of Corinth. Begin muna natin ng counting facts. Ang ating babasahin ngayong hapon. This letter is a very lengthy letter that Paul wrote that covers a lot of challenges, variety of challenges and problems that the church has faced. In 1 Corinthians, he dealt with a lot of issues. Dinil niya ang church divisions, moral failures, issues concerning about marriage, questionable practices, church order proper use of spiritual gifts, and even errors of false doctrines. Ang dami niyang isinulat that concerns issues that the church has faced. The, clearly, we can see that this message shows that the church of Corinth is so difficult to minister, at the same time maintain a Christian standard. Geographically looking at it, the city of Corinth, is the capital of Achaia, the southern tip of Greece, wherein uh, it is surrounded with two natural arbors or harbors, which makes it now a commercial center for trading and shipping. Shudad po ang Corinth. Ibig, ibig sabihin, hindi siya province type. Hindi siya probinsya, kundi talagang city siya. It is actually, it's, it's local residence are are actually a mixture of different cultures from Greeks, Latins, Jews, Egyptians, and other of those from Asia. Now, due to the fact that the city is the center of trading, at kita ang evident prosperity nito, Corinth was a city now known for indulgence and immorality. The name of the city, Corinth itself, by word, is known for being wicked and its immoral living. They worship, uh, the many local residents are worshipping a goddess named Aphrodite. To the point that there is a temple built in honor for her that housed 1,000 prostitutes that they use for a twisted form of worship. Bakit ko kailangan banggitin ang background ng Corinth para makita natin bakit kailangan magsulat or kailangan sumulat ni Apostle Paul addressing the issue that the church is facing. 
that the Church of Corinth is facing great obstacles and struggles in maintaining their purity and be witnesses of the Lord because they are exposed to a culture of immorality. To the point that even within such church, within such church, evident ang immorality. Paul needed to address that because it is happening within the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, he said, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. This is Apostle Paul talking to the church of Corinth. And you are proud. Imagine leading a church, being exposed or having people indulging to immorality and they are proud about it. Uh-oh. That's a very, a very dangerous ministry. And that's a problem in the church. The reason why there is immorality happening inside the church is because they are being exposed to a very chaotic culture. And looking at it, we could actually admit, church, that we live too in a culture that closely resembles to that of Corinth. Nangyayari din siya sa culture natin today. Our culture today, even dito lang sa Pilipinas, has become more and more toxic. We see laws being proposed that is favoring acts na hindi naman dapat. We see a generation that sees immoral acts as normal. Okay na ang live-in. Okay lang magpa-abort. Okay lang ang same-sex relationship. Okay na kasi 2020 na. Our society today has embraced the motto, please the flesh, whatever the cost. We see that people treat toxic and immoral living as normal today. Normal na siya, kasi trending siya. Promote equality, promote acceptance. This is my body, this is my life. Walang pake alaman. Everyone is doing it after all. Look at all these posts that we could relate to. This is what is happening to the world today. Whatever is trending, they are fighting for it. Instead of fighting for what is right, they are accepting things that are already wrong. Church, these things may be accepted already in our society little by little and being promoted in our culture. But the children of God is called to be set apart and have a different obligation. I would like to repeat that. These things, these toxic things, may be accepted in our society today, today and being promoted in our culture, but the children of God is called to be set apart and have a different obligation. The world we live in may be stained with immorality, but God has called us to live a life of purity. This afternoon, I'm going to, to talk about cross-culture, living a life of purity in a world stained by immorality. Sinubukan ko po talagang iksian, pero hindi ko po talaga kaya. <clears throat> when we say cross-culture sa ating title, I'm not talking about the act of cross-culture, wherein you're going to deal with two or more cultures and compare them. No, I'm talking about, when, it, when, when I say cross-culture, I'm talking about building a culture that is centered to, to, to put value to what Jesus did on the cross. A culture that should be evident in, in the church. A culture that should be evident among us children of God. And that is living a life of purity even if we are living in a world stained by immorality. And so this afternoon, we're going to dwell into two verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 to make our point. Apostle's letter, or Apostle Paul wrote in verses 19 and 20, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? 
You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I want us to look at the principles revealed in these verses. Looking at the word body mentioned, our lives from a biblical perspective as we consider living a life of purity. Tatlong bagay po that we need to look into. In order for us to, I mean, three things we need to look into as we consider living a life of purity before God. Number one, the opportunities of the body. The opportunities of the body. In 1 Corinthians 19, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have received from God? This is Apostle Paul's reminder to the church about the importance and significance of their bodies. Paul was aware of the immoral acts that is happening within the church. And he challenged them to consider the fact that the use of their bodies is for them to use it in light of God's righteousness. Do you not know, hindi mo ba alam, nakalimutan mo na ba, na ang katawan mo ay templo ng Holy Spirit? In this question that Apostle Paul have stated, have asked, we get to see and be reminded of the capacity and the opportunities our bodies have. have. And that is one, an opportunity or the opportunity for sin. The opportunity for sin. I am not in any way saying na okay lang ang magkasala. But I want to emphasize and I want us to realize that we have the potential para magkasala. Paul have heard so much about how the people sinned with their bodies. How the people in the church were influenced by the wrongdoings brought by the toxic culture. And that proves our capacity, even as believers, to sin with our flesh. Church! Hindi porket ligtas na tayo ay hindi na tayo magkakasala. Ilan ba sa atin ang makakapag-claim na wala kang kasalanan ever since naligtas ka? Wala, di ba? <laughs> Sana all. Because we are faced with temptations to sin every single day. We are facing opportunities for sin every single day. When we were saved, we were saved spiritually. But this body, this body that we have, this flesh, was not saved from the potential to sin. Each of us, no matter how old you are, no matter how, how long and how great your experiences is already, no matter how long you are in your walk with God, is still capable for sin. And we need to be reminded about it so that we would seek to guard our lives against such a sin. If pakiramdam mo na, hindi ka na or wala ka ng kakayahang magkasala, kasi kaya mo nang i-handle ang kasalanan, then you are walking in a very dangerous path if you think that way. Because the flesh desires things that would please the flesh. Our flesh, our body is not interested in doing things that would please God. It will always have its own way to please the need of the flesh. Kaya dapat aware ka sa kapasidad mo, sa sarili mo na magkasala. So that you will start living your life carefully. Knowing that the body has the opportunity for sin. How can we counter that? Ngayong alam mong may ganun kang kakayahan, kaya ng, ka, ng, kas, ng katawan mong magkasala. Kayang, kaya mong matem at mag-indulge or mag, mag, mag give in sa kasalanan. How can we counter that? We also need to know and, and be reminded of our opportunity for sanctification. We do not just have the opportunity for sin. We praise God that as children of the Lord, we have the opportunity to say no to sin. We have the opportunity for sanctification. Through the help and the guidance of the Lord, 
as we feed ourselves with the word of God, as we dwell in the presence of God, we can avoid and overcome sin. We do not need we do not have to live our lives as victims of sins. We can flee from it. That's why Apostle Paul says in verse 18, flee from sexual immorality. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. When we are tempted to commit sin with our body, we have the power to flee from it. Hindi pagiging duwag ang takbuhan ang temptation sa kasalanan. If you are in a situation that may cause you to be tempted, stay away from it. Alisin mo ang sarili mo sa sitwasyon na ikapapahamak mo. Huwag kang pumunta sa mga liblib na lugar. Huwag kang pumasok sa mga bars. Huwag kang tumagal sa mga may inuman. Huwag mong isurround ang sarili mo sa mga gawain mong or gawain na alam mong magkakasala ka lang. Lalong lalo na pag mahina ka sa temptation. Ayaw mo nang uminom. Pero lagi kang tumatambay sa sitwasyong alam mong may inuman. Ayaw mo nang malasing or mag-inuman pero meron kang stock ng beer sa ref mo. Church, it is impossible for you to be in a compromising situation if you are not staying for in a place that would call for that, that would cause that to happen. The point is, we do not need to engage in sin just because we have the opportunity for it. We can avoid it and flee from it. Not because everyone is doing it, you will do it. Just because you can does not mean you should. Not because it's normal for the many, you should join them. Hindi porket trending. Hindi porket ginagawa siya ng mga kaibigan mo, gagawin mo rin. Kahit sabihan kang killjoy ka, hindi ka nakikisama. Kahit ano pang pangbabash ang sabihin sa iyo ng mundo, siguraduhin mong hindi ka ko kompromiso. Don't put yourself in a situation that would cause you to compromise. Because there are only two opportunities that you would do with your bodies. An opportunity for you to sin or an opportunity for you to be sanctified and be holy. And be pure before God. Mas okay nang sabihan kang killjoy ka, hindi ka nakikisama. Mas okay nang mawalan ka ng kaibigan kesa maimpluensyahan ka ng mundo para sa kasalanan. You can honor God with your life. Satan has the power to tempt you, but he does not possess the power that the Lord has given you through the Holy Spirit to get away from sin. You can live your lives pure before God. You can live your lives that honor God. And that is us giving importance as well to what Jesus did on the cross. Knowing and identifying the opportunities of our body would make us be more aware and careful with our lives. But you can live your life that would honor God. Another thing that we need to look into when it comes to considering living a life of purity before God is not just the opportunities of the body but also the occupation of the body. Looking at the opportunities of the body, tingnan natin ang job description ng ating katawan, ng ating buhay. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. To fully get and understand the occupation of our body, notice three things. One, the, the resident. The resident. We must keep in mind that the Corinthian believers were struggling to keep their purity because of the immoral acts in the culture. 
to the point that they face many temptation in the world around them. Nagiging normal na sa kanila ang maimpluwensyahan ng mundo to the point that they think and they have that idea that their body was only to be kept pure if they are joining services. If they are joining church services. Magiging pure lang sila kapag nandun sila sa presence ni Lord. Magiging pure lang sila pag ginagawa nila ang gawain ng Panginoon. At sa mga ibang oras na hindi nila ginagawa ang para sa Panginoon, they can do whatever they please. Uh-oh. That's reality as well. That's a, a, a great reality as well. We will never know how a person live their lives outside church activities. Outside church services, a person may show up in services, may show up sa caring circle, may show up in every meeting meeting for the Lord. But what about those times that they are not with their co-believers? How are they spending their lives? Kaya po napakahirap din po talaga kahit ngayong panahon ng pandemic kapag tayo ay nag online service. Tayo pa na hindi nagkikita-kita ng more than, ng, ng halos 8 months na. It's difficult. Because, how are we spending our time, how are we spending our lives outside church activities? Baka nga kahit ngayon na nanonood ka ng worship service, iba-iba ang ginagawa mo. Distracted ka. Baka while watching our service right now, you are distracting and distracted and doing other things. And you're doing whatever you please. Yun din yung naging struggle ng Church of Corinthians. They have that thought that they would keep themselves pure if they are doing church things or things for the Lord. But in the other times, they can do what, they're please, what they please. Paul here addressed the facts to the believers that their physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit where He resides. Remember that the moment we receive Jesus as our Lord, we are marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Coach, alam ko na yan. Naririnig ko na yan lagi. Yes, we understand that, but I want to put a strong emphasis on this as a reminder for us this afternoon. The Holy Spirit the third person of the Godhead three in one is living in us. The Holy Spirit is not residing sa church building. Hindi siya yung tipong naghihintay sa yon na magpapakita ka sa church gathering and he will also show up when the service starts. No, we are the temple at all times. We are the church. The temple where he resides. So that should make us consider where we take the Spirit. It should now make us consider how we are keeping the Holy Spirit. Take a moment and pause, church. Ano ang mga ginawa mo for the past weeks? What were the things that you have done in the past weeks? The conversations you have made and exchanged, places you have been, or even ideas and thoughts na sumagi lang sa isipan mo. Looking at all of those things, where you have spent your time, how you have spent your life for the past week, consider now the fact that you are realizing that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. Are you comfortable for what you have done? When He was with you and you are doing all those things? Are the things that you have done please the Lord? Or may have not pleased the Lord? Marami sa atin na engage sa mga activities that we may not be proud of. We could have grieved the Holy Spirit with our actions, with our thoughts, with what we have done. Church, the Spirit is with us wherever we go. And we have to keep that in mind. 
that He resides in us? How are we treating the resident of our lives? Hindi ba't kapag, kapag may bisita sa bahay? Hindi ba't kapag may darating sa bahay? Todo linis tayo kasi may bisita ka. Gusto mo proper at presentable ka. Yung kwarto mo na hindi mo nalilinis na ng matagal. <laughs> Guilty ako doon. Kailangan maayos siya kasi may darating na bisita. Now, knowing that the Holy Spirit is living in you, how are you keeping Him in your life? Is He pushed aside? And He is being grieved by all the worldly things that you have allowed to come in? Knowing that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, He is with you at all times. How do you feel when you evaluate that in the times na hindi mo siya pinili at hindi mo siya inonor, was that glorifying the resident of your life? Yung mga panahon na hinayaan mo ang mundo ang mang-influence, mang-influence sa'yo, have we not grieved the Holy Spirit in our lives? Have we not grieved the Holy Spirit when you visited sites or websites na hindi dapat? Have you grieved the Holy Spirit when you when you watch videos that should not be watched? Church, remember that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Kaya ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, hindi mo ba alam? That you are a temple or you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Nakalimutan mo na ba? Hindi ka ba aware that the Holy Spirit is residing in you when you have done those things that should not be done? We need to understand and see the resident of our body. And that is the Holy Spirit. Let's also look into not just the resident, but also the reliance. In living a life of purity before God, how can we do well in taking that responsibility to to honor the Lord with our bodies? The verse says that the Spirit was given to us as a gift. God has given us the Spirit to dwell within us. This is not limited to just certain Christians, but to all believers. Understanding this now will help us that in the times that we are tempted, the helper that God has left us with with should be our greater reliance, reliance. When we are tempted to do and live a manner that is displeasing to the Lord, we are to rely and depend on Him. The Spirit in us has a purpose, and that is to protect you, to remind you to not do things that is going to to dishonor the Lord. And that is our responsibility. Our responsibility is to rely on Him whatever the cost. In the times we are tempted, we can and should rely on Him day by day. And that is our role to play. Paul is asking this question, do you not know? Is a constant reminder that when the Corinthian believers were being tempted and have fallen to temptation, they actually have the power to be reliant to the resident of their bodies. And that is the Holy Spirit. With that fact, that is also applicable for us today. We have the Holy Spirit in our lives. We should rely on Him when it comes to our life, when when it comes to living our lives. That is the role of the Holy Spirit, to be the helper, to be a constant reminder that our lives is to honor the Lord. Our lives 
is already belonging to the Lord. That means we are to look also not just in the reliance, not just in the resident and the reliance, and we are to look into the restraint. Many of the Corinthian believers as well as the believers today may think, why would it matter? Why would it matter if I would live my life pure or not? When it comes to the issue of, of purity, why does it matter? Remember the verse, you are not your own. You are not your own. We have the spirit in us where we could rely on him. Why? Because we are now not our own. We are no longer free to do what we want to. We are no longer free to behave as we please. We now belong to the Lord. We don't have the right to live in a way as if no walang nagbago sa buhay mo when you receive Jesus. Because we are not of the world anymore. The reason why we are called to be set apart the reason why we are called to live a life pure before God, because we belong to God. Paul emphasized this part, because this is a reminder for the church that you are set to be different from the people of the world who sees immoral living as normal. Kung sabi ng mundo na okay lang, kasi 2020 na, Kung trending siya, kaya dapat makisabay ka. Kasi nagbabago talaga yung generation, di ba? Today, may acceptance na. Today, we will promote na kaya, na kailangan ipaglaban mo yan. Dapat may equality na. Buhay naman nila yun. If the world is saying all these things, the church should not be like them. That is what the world says. But what matters for us is what the Lord says. Amen? Amen. Wag kang magpakain sa sinasabi ng mundo dahil hindi ka na parte ng mundo. You belong not to the world, but you belong to the Lord. Pwede mo bang i-comment dyan with a cop's luck? I belong to the Lord. I belong to God. We need to, to have that constant reminder in us. That's why it should be difficult for us. It should be hard for us. It should matter for us that we live our lives pure rather than be impure. We should seek purity rather than join the world's immorality. Because we are not of the world anymore and we are not of our own because this this body is still capable to sin this body is still half of the world <laughs> we are not to be like them church we should rely to what the lord says back it back it this will now bring me to my la last point to live a life of purity in a world of immorality, we're not just going to look at the opportunities of the body. We're not just going to look at the occupation of the body. We are to understand and live out the obligation of the body. The obligation of the body. Verse 20 says, You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. This verse now puts everything into perspective. We need to consider our obligation as we live our lives of purity and honor before the Lord. For us to be able to understand our obligation, look at the price in the verse. We have been bought by a price. Paul is speaking of the price that the Lord has paid. He offered himself for everyone, for as a sacrifice for all of us. He paid the price that no one could. A price that could not be comparable to any riches of this world. He held nothing. He gave everything of him. 
This is the price that he paid that is more than silver or gold. It is his life. Considering the price that was paid by the Lord, it should now, it should actually ought us. It should, it should, this thought will, will should ought to put us a compelling desires in our heart, desire in our heart to not put the price that Jesus paid in vain. We should desire to honor what Jesus did on the cross by living a life that honors God. We have the obligation to live our lives pure in such a way that honors the Lord because of the price He paid on the cross. In the same way, because there is a price that was paid, we also need to notice the purchase that was done. The purchase was made. We are bought by a price. That is why we are not now our own. We are now not our own. The interchange na ako, di ba? We belong to the Lord. He has purchased our redemption. Prior to the Lord, we were once servants of sin. But now we are servants of His. We are now obligated to live for Him. And it is not an option. We were now brought from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. And because we belong to the kingdom of God, we are to honor God with our lives and with this body. That is the purpose of our why we are to look into the obligation of our body. Because the purpose says in the verse, Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. We are to glorify the Lord with our bodies. It makes sense and it is expected. We are to glorify Him with all the, the things that we are doing. We are to glorify Him in all we do, our actions, our thoughts, our behaviors, our gestures. That's why I want to emphasize this. <clears throat> if this body we have is the temple of God, and it is. If this body has been bought by a price, with a price, and it has. If this body is expected to glorify God, and it is. Then we should be mindful and maintaining and living a life of purity. Even if we are living in a world stained by immorality. We cannot glorify God, church. We cannot glorify God if our bodies are engaging in activities that do not honor the Lord. In fact, this is where I would want to, to bring it down. We need to present ourselves at all times in every situation that would honor the Lord. Ladies, our choice of dress many times determines whether we glorify God or not. Yung pagka-crop top mo, kita balat mo, mini skirt mo, super super mini skirt mo, or super super mini shorts mo, posting on Facebooks, Facebook ng mga pictures na halos may nakikita na sayo. Sayang naman, madaming likes. Sayang naman, sexy ako dito. Sexy ka nga. Madami ngang likes, madami ngang reacts at hearts. Pero does it glorify God? <clears throat> In every situation, we need to glorify God. Hindi lang siguro sa pagpo-post ng, ng Facebook or ng, ng photo sa Facebook. Our actions, lalo na kahit sa mga social medias natin, our engagements, our activities that we are involved in, our postings, our conversation exchange with people. Always ask this church as part of your evaluation, will this glorify the Lord? 
knowing that the Holy Spirit is within you. He sees everything that you're doing. Is this glorifying the Lord? Kung magraranta ako at magpapatama ako ng tao, magpaparinig ako ng sam para sa, sa isang tao sa Facebook, will it glorify the Lord? For me to expose it publicly, issues that can be actually uh, dealt with privately, will it glorify the Lord? For me to engage and also rant about the government or about someone or about anything issues that is happening, will it glorify the Lord? I think that's the question that needs to be part of our system whenever we do things. In every click in Facebook, in every click in social media, if I will visit this site, that I know I should not, will it glorify the Lord? That's part of our evaluation. Because we know that we have the Holy Spirit within us. We should do things that would be pleasing before God. Church, the world is already as toxic as it is already. The norm in the society is already heartbreaking. The culture is already stained by immorality. May we be reminded today that we are called to be holy because we serve a God who is holy. We are to counter the culture of immorality by having a culture that puts value to what Jesus did on the cross. So let us be more careful in how we live our lives. Knowing that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, May we all the more depend on Him and help and, and ask Him to help us to search our hearts through and through that, to make us a temple that would glorify the Lord. I would like to really say this. Preparing this message gave a very heavy heart in me. I'm not speaking because I'm already there. No, I'm still on the process. I'm not perfect. No one is. The church can never be perfect. But may we be reminded that we are to go through this process. We are to influence the world more than the world to influence us. Ano ba ang hahayaan mo? Hahayaan mo ba ang mundo ang mang influence sa iyo? Mang influence sa iyo. How can we be the salt and the light of the world? How can we reflect God if we ourselves are allowing the world to influence us? So may this be a message that would make us reflect and evaluate. Church we are called to live a life pure and honor the Lord with our bodies. We are to live a life of purity. Even if the world we live in is filled and stained with immorality because we are called to be set apart. We are called to rise up and be agents of change. We are called to reflect Christ in every way. Let's create a culture that would not just counter the culture of this world, but a culture that would put value to what Jesus did on the cross. That's our cross culture. Living a life of purity, even in a world stained by immorality. I pray and I hope that the message that was sent would give us a desire, would plant in us desires to honor the Lord with our life and in our body. Yes, it's difficult, but through the, the help and the Holy Spirit's guidance, it is possible. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Panginoon, pinapasalamatan po namin kayo 
sa mensaheng ibinigay mo ngayong hapon. Lord, sa opportunity na marinig ang iyong salita, na maaring nakasal nakasakit, O God, Lord, sa aming mga puso. But God, I know that as your word has been spoken, you are doing something within us to everyone who's watching and will still be watching. I know, God, that you are in the point of process of refining us, of molding us, O oh God, to be more and more like you, Jesus. So right now, I pray that, God, you would place in us desires, holy desires, O oh God, to honor you with our bodies, to honor you with our lives, that, God, we will be more conscious on the presence of, our, of the Holy Spirit residing within us. Lord, we will not grieve the Holy Spirit. Rather, Lord, we would do things that would honor Him and be pleasing before Him, O God, before you, O God. Lord, thank you for reminding us to, this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for the heaviness of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the message we have received this afternoon. Lord, we continue to invite you, Holy Spirit, to move within us. Tuloy-tuloy, O God, Lord Panginoon, ang pagre-refine mo sa aming puso gamit ang mensaheng meron, meron O God, Lord, ngayong hapon para sa amin. Lord, we lift everything to you. Cause us, O Lord, to be open to any form of rebuke. To be open, O God, Lord, with your word piercing our hearts if that is the cause for us to be more refined. Thank you, Lord, for this series. We declare continuously that God bukas ang aming mga puso at isipan para, O God, Lord, sa mga susunod mo pang mensahe. We invite the process, O God, Lord. We invite your, your process, you coming and intervening sa process na ito, and we surrender. Father, we declare that God may this cause us to all the more be in awe and be grateful of your grace and your mercy. So, Lord, I declare this week will be a week, O God, Lord, of refining. And, Lord, deepen us, O God, Lord, deepening us, O God, Lord, in our devotion. That, God, in the times, O Lord, that we are weak when it comes to temptation, cause us, Lord, to be sensitive in your leading Holy Spirit. Right now, Lord, nagpapasalamat kami. We thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. God, as we repent, as you expose sins in our life that we are trying to hide or there are things that are being hidden, God, as you expose that, Lord, right now, we thank you for your forgiveness. Father, thank you for reminding us that we are called to be the salt and the light of this world, that we are called to be set apart. Thank you, Lord. And may you just increase that desire in our heart. Right now, I declare blessings upon blessings to your people. I pray, O Lord, for the blessing of provision for those who are in need. The blessing of wisdom, O God, for those who need wisdom for this week. I even, Lord, right now declare healing, O Lord, for those who need healing right now. By the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. Claim it, church. Claim it. In the name of Jesus, those who need healing, O God, Lord, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, you are healed in the name of Jesus. And I pray and declare that this week will be, will be a week of deepened devotion to you. Find us in awe of who you are, O God. And may you cause us, O God, Lord, to all the more honor you with our lives. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. And we continue to invite, O God, Lord, for you to dwell in us. We welcome you, Lord. May this week be a week of testimony of all answered prayers in the name of Jesus. And may you, O God, Lord, continuously reign in our lives. To you be all glory honor and praise in the name of jesus we pray amen and amen thank you so much church and see you next sunday